what's your reaction to the results that we've seen? In many ways, they're disappointing results, although we did have very good results in London and in Wales and in Manchester. So it's not a uniform picture, but certainly some results were disappointing and it was very distressing to lose Hartlepool. Um, it's interesting that you pick out the three areas, London, Wales, Manchester, where you think Labour did better. Uh, places where Labour has a different figurehead, shall we say, to the national uh, leadership uh, in Andy Burnham, Mark Drayford and Sadiq Khan. Uh, do you think that this perhaps suggests that it is a leadership problem? I think it's a strategy problem. When Keir Starmer was first selected as leader, he talked about unifying the party and he talked about not oversteering away from the policies under Jeremy Corbyn. He needs to go back to that way of thinking. I think sacking and Urena for instance, is not a unifying thing to do. I think we need to be building on the policies in the 2019 manifesto, many of which were forward thinking and popular. We need to get the strategy right. You're talking about going back to the policies or building on the policies from the 2019 manifesto. Some people listening to that might think that is quite a staggering um, thing to say. You know, that was your worst result since 1935. You lost 59 seats. Isn't that a manifesto that failed? It was a manifesto that taking the policies individually was very popular. There's no doubt that the party leadership came under fantastic media attack, but the actual policies were popular. The policies might have been popular individually, but as a whole, they weren't popular, were they? They led to your worst defeat since 1935. They polled well. Of course we had a terrible defeat. You don't, need to, you don't need to remind me that it was a terrible defeat. But, you know, extraordinary media attack on the party and on our leader at that time. So we now have a chance to regroup, to unify and put forward those popular policies. Um, just... I was speaking to Peter Mandelson over the last few days. He, of course, the former Hartlepool MP, you were talking earlier about the disappointing result in Hartlepool. He says Jeremy Corbyn is still casting a dark cloud. He's largely responsible for some of the losses that we've seen. Do, do you accept that you know, long, long Corbyn, if you like, is affecting Labour's chances still? Well, we won Hartlepool twice under Jeremy Corbyn's leadership and, importantly, with a bigger proportion of the vote. I mean, you can't say that Jeremy is responsible for the Hartlepool result. The disaffection in post-industrial Britain long predates Jeremy's leadership and we have to look at the roots of it. Let's talk a little bit about Keir Starmer and what he needs to do, in your view, uh, going forward. Uh, you talked a bit about policy. Um, do you think that um, there is a wider strategy issue that Keir Starmer needs to do, talking a bit more about his vision? John McDonnell, for example, saying that some of those candidates were sent out naked with no vision, no policies. Is that something that you would agree with? I think that Keir Starmer needs to go back to what he said when he was elected as leader and he wants to build, yes, on some of the policies which we were talking about in 2019. It is important that candid candidates can talk about the Labour Party's vision and talk about our policies. Is it right that Angela Rayner should lose her job as party chair? I said earlier, I think it's baffling why he sacked Angela Rayner. She didn't take any of the big decisions around Hartlepool. And we've not heard anywhere in the country people saying they didn't vote Labour because of Angela Rayner. What do you think it um, says about Keir Starmer's leadership if the first thing that he does is to reach out and sack Angela Rayner, who, of course, is a you know, working-class woman, she, she's from the North, some people would say that she is the kind of person that you need to reconnect in some of the areas that you lost. I think it's puzzling to sack Angela Rayner and it really is unfair to have her take... 
think we have uh, lost the line there to uh, Diane Abbott. Oh, no, you're back. Good news. Uh, excellent. Um, is the party too London-centric? I know you're a London MP yourself, of course, so it might be a bit of a, a difficult question to answer. Um, but there has been criticism uh, for the current Labour Party uh, for being too metropolitan, uh, too London-centric, not reaching out to the towns and the more traditional areas uh, of the United Kingdom that Labour's traditionally done well in. I, I, I don't accept that at all. I'm a East London MP. I'm speaking to you from East London, and we have as much child poverty as anywhere else in the country. We have very large numbers of blue-collar workers. I think it's, an, in many ways, an artificial distinction between so-called London elites and the rest of the country. What we need to do is bring together Hackney and Hartlepool in policies which speak to the issues that both types of Labour supporter have in common. Do you think this is existential for Labour? It is extraordinary when you look at some of the results, for example, you know, losing Hartlepool for the first time since it was created, losing the majority on Durham Council for the first time in 100 years. For many people, the 2019 election was seen as rock bottom, but if anything, Labour's gone backwards. Are you worried that Labour, with this realignment, may not be able to win power again? Not at all. I'm old enough to remember in the 80s, Eric Hobsbawm wrote a very widely circulated um, article on the forward march of Labour halted. And his thesis was that Labour was an existential crisis. It wasn't true then and it's not true now. We need to unify, we need to regroup and we need to move forward. Should a reshuffle be on the cards? Well, I mean, you probably know as much as I do, people are talking about a reshuffle. But I think generally it's a mistake to focus on personalities. We need to get the strategy and the policies right. I spoke, uh, just finally, I spoke to Andy Burnham yesterday, who, of course, as you said, you know, was re-elected as Mayor of Greater Manchester, increasing his uh, vote share. He said that if in the future, the distant future, the Labour Party should need him, he's there, they should give him a call. Is now the time to be dialing Andy Burnham's number? I, I, it's not for me to dial Andy Burnham's number, but it's interesting that he's saying that he would pick up the phone to the party leadership. 